We welcome you to our 2022 Requiem Mass for the Unborn. As I look into the pews, I see so many faces of the people who joined us earlier today for our annual One Light LA event. I extend my gratitude to you for the remaining with us this evening. I know you must be quite tired, but I know we can testify that we experienced a beautiful day which gave us the opportunity to witness to the world the sanctity and dignity of human life. Our theme this year was Ford in Hope, which was poetically tied into the Jubilee theme of Ford in Mission. Our witness to sanctity and dignity of human being in all stages of life is even more needed in society. Hope is longed for and many are searching. From our experiences with the pandemic to the attacks on human life, we see in our culture and world that we are called to be bearers of hope and hold on to God's message for us. For I know well the plans I have in mind for you, plans for your welfare and not for woe, so as to give you a future of hope. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. May our gift of hope spread abundantly to others and bring the joy of life to our neighborhoods. I thank you for your willingness to be this source of hope for others, and I thank you for joining us this evening for prayer. Please remain seated as the deacons and their wives and the Knights of Columbus process in.
Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Please be seated for a moment. Your Excellency, my brothers and sisters in Christ, good evening. My name is Father Alexei, and I serve as the ecumenical and interreligious officer for the Archdiocese. In pre-pandemic times, we were joined at the Requiem by several of our ecumenical and interreligious colleagues who unambiguously joined us in witnessing to the sacredness of human life. Unfortunately, illness or an understandable reluctance to be in large crowds at this time of the Omicron variant have prevented a number of them from joining us this year. I will share their names with you in a moment. However, it is my honor to introduce to you those who have joined us this evening. Please hold your applause until I have completed all of the introductions. Once again, we are honored and privileged to have with us His Eminence, Archbishop Hovnanda Darian, Primate of the Armenian Church Western Diocese. His Eminence is accompanied by Father Gnorg. Representing His Eminence, Metropolitan Joseph of the Antiochian Orthodox Christian Archdiocese of North America, is the very Reverend Nabil Hanna, Dean of St. Nicholas Antiochian Orthodox Cathedral here in Los Angeles. Mr. Joey Baker, a PhD student at Fuller Theological Seminary. Fuller is an evangelical Pentecostal, Pentecostal school. Ms. Sandra Bossi, ecumenical representative at Good Shepherd Catholic Parish here in Beverly Hills, and my assistant. Those not joining us this evening, but wishing to express solidarity with our witness to the sacredness of human life, are His Eminence, Archbishop Benjamin, of the Diocese of the West, Orthodox Church in America. Dr. Mel Robeck, Fuller Theological Seminary Professor, and a member of both the International and our Archdiocesan Evangelical Pentecostal Catholic Dialogue. Mr. Scott Tanner, Director of Communications, Los Angeles Region, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. The Venerable Wei Dong, Abbot of the Shilai Buddhist Temple in Hacienda Heights. Dr. Eba Hatut. Dr. Hatut is a Muslim, a pediatrician, and president of the Hassan Hatut Foundation. Atab Tarifi, former chair of the Islamic Center of Southern California. Dr. Mary Glenn, co-president of Cities Together, and a chaplain for both the district attorneys and public defender's offices here in Los Angeles, and Pastor Dennis Scribner, Pastor of Bethany Assembly of God Church in Alhambra. Please join me in welcoming our ecumenical and interreligious guests. Please stand. So, my brothers and sisters, we gather for our, our traditional reckoning for the unborn mass, but also especially open our hearts to the grace of God and uh, continue to pray for the respect of human life for conception to natural death. So, let's start a celebration of knowledge in our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to my God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have really sinned. My, my thoughts and my words, in what I have done, done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. For I ask, let's be an All the ancient saints, are you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy.
Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, love of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Let us pray. God, our Creator, we give thanks to you, who alone have the power to impart the breath of life, as you form each of us in our mother's womb. Grant, we pray, that we, whom you have made stewards of creation, may remain faithful to this sacred trust and constant in safeguarding the dignity of every human life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, he read out of the book from daybreak till midday. In the presence of the men, women, and those children old enough to understand. And all the people listened attentively to the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, His Excellency, and Ezra the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people, said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad and do not weep, for all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared, for today is holy to our Lord. Do not be saddened this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also is Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not mean for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them, in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you nor again the head to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary, and those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surround with great honor, and our less presentable parts are treated with greater propriety, whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has also constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work mighty deeds? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? The word of the Lord.
to you. With your a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided, after investigating everything accurately and new, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you. Most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him and said to him, and he said to them, Today the scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in this beautiful liturgy, we continue our celebration of the Gospel of Life, which we began this morning in our One Life a Life procession and family festival. We am grateful to all of you who came out today to proclaim the beautiful truth that all human life is sacred. In this Requiem Mass tonight, we mourn the innocent lives that were taken in Los Angeles to the evil of abortion. In their presence, in the memory of these little ones, we commit ourselves once more to the noble struggle for the rights of the unborn child. We commit ourselves to the task of creating an America where human life is cherished and cared for, an America where the family is recognized as the true foundation of society. Our first, read, read, uh, our first reading that we heard this evening from the book of Nehemiah invites us to reflect on God's law. As we heard, the people have returned from the long exile in Babylon. They are gathered to hear the priest Ezra read from what the scripture calls the book of the law of God. 
And our reading tells us that the people wept when they heard the words of the law. They wept because they understood that they had not been living as God intended them to live. And my brothers and sisters, in the presence of these little ones who were lost, we weep tonight as well. And for the same reason, we weep because we have not lived as God taught us to live. At the heart of God's law are the Ten Commandments, as we know, that he delivered to Moses on Mount Sinai. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not kill. Honor your father and your mother, and the rest. And the Ten Commandments form the foundation of Western civilization. They shape, they shape the assumption of Americans founding documents. From our history, we know the tragedy when our human laws do not reflect God's laws. It leads to terrible evils and injustice. We have seen this with slavery and with segregation. We have seen this with abortion and with euthanasia. So tonight, especially, we pray for our nation and for our leaders and for ourselves. We are asking our Lord tonight to renew in our hearts the desire to fulfill the promise of America. As we know, American founders believe that all men and women are created by God with a sacred dignity and endowed with un undeniable rights to life, liberty, and equality. They believe that the only purpose of government was to promote and protect those sacred rights. So my dear brothers and sisters, yes, we have a mission to fulfill the beautiful promises of founders. But we have this mission not, not only as Americans, we have this mission as Catholics, as Christians. In the Gospel tonight, we heard the words that Jesus read from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free. This was our Lord's mission. And this is also the mission that he entrusted to his church in every age and in every place. Jesus suffered and died to raise up every person to new life, to the glorious liberty of the children of God. By his love, Jesus revealed to us the great mystery and the dignity of the human person, who is made in the image of God, redeemed by the blood of God's only Son, born on earth but destined for heaven. He revealed the truth that we all are brothers and sisters, sons and daughters of our Father in heaven. And tonight, Jesus is calling each one of us once again to proclaim these glad tidings to our nation, to open our neighbor's eyes to see the beauty and sanctity of every human life. He's calling us to liberate our neighbors from the oppression of individualism and indifference. Then St. Paul tells us in the second reading, that we are, we are all one body, that we are Christ's body. That means that as Catholics, as Christians, we can never be satisfied when any member of Christian body is suffering. We cannot rest while there are some in our society who are being denied their God-given rights and dignity. For nearly 50 years now, 
Our nation has refused to recognize the most basic right of the unborn child, the right to life, the foundation of every other human right. But then, my brothers and sisters, the words of Ezra tonight give us hope. He told the people of Israel, do not be sad, do not weep. Do not be sad in this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. And yes, I can see that with the help of the grace of God, the day is coming when the dignity and rights of the unborn child will finally be respected and protected. Until then, let us continue the work of building a culture of compassion and care, working for a society where each one of us can live in the freedom that our Creator calls us to live. Let us ask for the grace to love others as Jesus loves them. Let us ask for the grace to make, make our homes and our parishes beautiful sanctuaries of love for everyone, for women in need, for children, for families. Let us make our hearts a sanctuary of love and compassion for all who are weak and vulnerable. Our Lord Jesus has entrusted this great work to all of us, to each one of us. And as we have heard tonight, rejoicing in the Lord must be our strength. Again, do not be sad, do not weep. Do not be sad in this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. Trusting in His mercy, trusting in His providence, trusting in a great, great plan of love and salvation. So, my brothers and sisters, let us continue always forward in hope. And may our Blessed Mother Mary give us the strength in this moment to build the civilization of love that Jesus calls us to and our nation's founding documents promise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand for a profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not man, Consustance is very fun. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For its sake was crucified in the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, choice in living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, the door and glorified, God spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life for the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of Jesus is the gospel of life. Confident in God's love for us as the Creator, Redeemer, and Lord of our lives, we bring our prayers of petition before His altar.
the people. May God grant us courage to embrace his precious gift of life, even in the most difficult of circumstances. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, O Lord, hear our prayer. For our public servants, May God grant him the humility and wisdom to defend all human life from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. For the times we are pressured to compromise our respect for human life. May the Holy Spirit strengthen our resolve and reveal to each of us how we can use our gifts in the sharing of the gospel of life. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, hear our prayer, O Lord, hear our prayer. For women and men suffering after abortion, May the church's post-abortion ministry, Project Rachel, help them find peace and healing through Christ's endless mercy. We pray to the Lord. For our world today, may God continue to unite us in peace and respect for each other and strengthen our resolve to cherish and to uphold the dignity of every human life. We pray to the Lord. For those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, Pray to the Lord. Loving God, grant wisdom to those who lead us, compassion and courage to those who work to defend human life, and safety and care to every human being. For you alone who form us in our mother's wombs, and who call us home to heaven, our God, forever and ever. We are the body of Christ. As the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians states, if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Let us be generous and joyful stewards. Let us take a moment to reflect on the blessings received this past week and prepare our gifts. Today's collection is to support the pro-life efforts of the cathedral and the archdiocese. And I invite the ushers to pass the baskets to receive your gifts. Thank you for your generosity.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up 
give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our dear and our salvation always and everywhere. To you, thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give light to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts and brought to brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be brought for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his front of resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you intense giving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose day you will to reconcile us to yourself, and that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Jose our Bishop, the author of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. By the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from it. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Tonight we are blessed to have a witness talk um, from one of our very own speakers today from One Life LA, Sister Bethany Madonna. She's from the community of the Sisters of Life, a community that works tirelessly and wholeheartedly in walking with women who are pregnant and helping promote 
the goodness of life and all human dignity. So I'd like to welcome Sister Bethany Madonna. I want to begin by quoting St. John Paul II's Gospel of Life, number 99. He said this, I would now like to say a special word to women who have had an abortion. The church is aware of the many factors which may have influenced your decision, and she does not doubt that in many cases it was a painful and even shattering decision. The Father of mercies is ready to give you his forgiveness and his peace in the sacrament of reconciliation. To the same Father and to his mercy, you can with sure hope entrust your child. To the same Father and his mercy, you can with sure hope entrust your child. A woman ran up to us and shared her story. She said that before she and her husband were married, they became pregnant and out of fear and embarrassment, chose to abort their child. Years later, they both experienced profound conversions and the grief of the abortion was like a tidal wave. She was able to go to confession and participated in a healing ministry. One night she had a dream, and in the dream, uh, she was wearing a dress with a huge rip down the middle of it. A little girl came in, and she was holding a needle and thread, and she began sewing it up. When she had finished, she said, see, mommy, it's all right. Then a man's voice came, Amy, Amy, and off she went. When she awoke, she knew the baby was a girl, that she was named Amy, which means the beloved one, and that she had forgiven her. The Lord knew that that event had torn the very fabric of her life in two. And out of his infinite tender kindness, allowed her to entrust her daughter to him with sure hope. Tonight, as we honor the lives of the unborn, the holy innocents, each one of them loved and cherished and chosen by God, Each one of them has a name, and we grieve them, and we express our love and our sorrow. Tonight, let us also hold in our hearts and prayers their mothers and fathers. May they know that they are not alone in their pain. Let us entrust them, too, with sure hope to the Father of mercies, who even now desires to mend torn hearts with his healing and forgiveness. Jesus, we trust in you. The unborn, alive within, poised to enter this world, they had begun their journeys their lives already full with purpose and meaning. This evening, we will honor those lives lost to abortion today in Southern California. We will light the beautiful candles you see placed in the cathedral sanctuary, and we will observe a period of prayerful silence for our sisters and brothers who needed and deserved more time. As you gaze at these flickering lights, Think of each candle as representing one life lost to abortion this very day in Los Angeles. At sunrise, these lives were quietly flourishing, alive among us. At its setting, these candles will mark their passing from this world. Even in their brevity, these lives had meaning 
and speak loudly of the injustice of a finish where there should have been a start, an ending which came at the beginning, a sunset at dawn. Rest in peace, little ones. May their souls and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.
My friends, our candles have been lit and prayerful silence has been observed for these little ones who have gone home to the kingdom. Following our Mass, these candles will be placed in the windows of the Cathedral Colonnade where they will remain lit for a week and visible to the thousands of people traveling on the freeway below. As it says in the Gospel of Matthew, you are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. It is our prayer that these flickering lights will serve as a shining witness to the city of the angels of our commitment to the sanctity of all human life. And I would like to extend a special thank you to all who have supported the ceremony of light this evening through your candle donations. 
Before the final blessing, as pastor, I would like to take a few moments just to thank each and every one of you for your presence this evening. As you heard at the beginning of our celebration, many of you have been here, or not here, but locally all day celebrating this gift of life. And so I thank you for making the sacrifice of your time and especially for joining us this evening in prayer. I'd also like to thank the following individuals and groups, and I would ask that you just hold your applause until the very end. I'd like to thank Archbishop Gomez, the bishops, priests, and deacons, the men and women religious, the seminarians, the Knights of Columbus, Father Alexei, and the ecumenical and interreligious guests who are with us this evening, Michael Donaldson, the senior director of the Office of Life, Justice, and Peace, John Bonaducci and our choir, Eileen Bonaducci and the Requiem Mass team, and also thank you to the cathedral staff, liturgy department, and cathedral volunteers. So again, thank you to each and every one of you for being here this evening. Before the final blessing, I also want to thank all of you, but uh, I especially want to welcome Bishop Ramon Mejarano, who is the uh, Auxiliary Bishop of San Diego. Bienvenido. Also, the Sisters of Life that are here with us. So, sisters, thank you for being here. Sister, thank you. And also, I want a special recognition of the uh, transitional deacons for the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. They're going to be a playing priest this year. So, please stand. Please pray for them. Okay? Pray for them. They need a lot of prayers. That's, that's a joke. So. so please stand for the final blessing. Uh, let's also keep uh, uh, always remembering the beautiful theme of our celebration this year, Forward in Hope. Let us trust in God and help all of us to be missionaries of life in our time. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and may you persevere in holy deeds. Amen. May he turn your steps toward himself and show you the path of charity and peace. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Oh. Oh. Only in God. Only in God. Only in God. Thank you. 